Welcome to Dracina Wines Podcast. Our wines plus your moments equals great memories. I'm your host, Lori, and this is a podcast about all things wine. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dracina Wines Podcast. Before we get into this week's topic, I'm going to do a little shameless plug. In case you didn't know, Dracina Wines now has a wine club. We named it the Chalk Club. Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting a little jealous, so we decided he deserved to be the spokesdog for the club. In Las Vegas, betting chalk means you are betting on all the favorites. We are betting that we are one of your favorite wineries, so we thought that the name was apropos. The club is simple and a bit different than most. First, when you sign up, we will ship you three bottles twice a year, so there is not a huge commitment. Once in April and once in September. You can choose if you want to get all red or a mix of red and rosé. You will immediately get 15% off of all your wine purchases. But what makes our club stand out is that there is a progressive discount. When you let your membership ride to the next year, your discount increases. Each year you parlay, you get an additional 5% off of the plan to a maximum of 25%. Your club shipments are also discounted. There is a flat $15 shipping, plus we'll cover your cost for your second shipment. That's pretty much a sure bet for you. So please head to our website, www.dracinawines.com, to find out all of the benefits of joining the Chalk Club and to sign up. In this episode, I am talking bubbles. Yeah, not the type we used to blow when we were kids, although if I'm being completely honest with you, I still do enjoy doing that, but rather tiny little bubbles in wine. I'm talking champagne and other sparkling wine. It is tough to be upset when you see those bubbles, and when that effervescence travels up your nose, you just have to smile. You all know what I'm talking about. Bubbles just make you happy. Whether it's your birthday or half birthday, A friend you haven't seen in forever is coming over, or one you see all the time. It's Friday, it's Monday, it doesn't matter. Do you see where I'm going? Sparkling wine makes an everyday occurrence seem amazing, and a magnificent event seem even more awe-inspiring. Napoleon knew what he was talking about when he said, I drink champagne when I win to celebrate, and when I lose, to console myself. So thanks to Mike Gurley and the Nightcaps for that verse of Champagne, Champagne. So seriously, who doesn't love champagne? The sound the cork makes as it pops, the tiny bubbles as they rise up your glass, what's not to love? Aside from the beauty and awe of the bubbles, it all comes down to science. Bubbles are carbonation, and carbonation means carbon dioxide. It's a gas, so it rises. How many of us has had a champagne cork get away from us? I was at a party once and popped the cork, and it literally went two stories high. How I wish I had that on video. It was so cool. Really not the best thing in the world, but it was pretty cool. Legally, sparkling wine must be at least one atmosphere, and greater than 0.392 milliliters of carbon dioxide per 100 milliliters. Most sparkling is actually under much more pressure. It really is around five to six atmospheres. And in a closed container, the amount of carbon dioxide in the head of the bottle is equal to the amount within the liquid. But now once you open that container, the equilibrium is eliminated and there is an excess of gas in the liquid. That's the reason why the cork goes flying out because the sum of the energy stored in the closed champagne bottle is released as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is work energy, and that is what sends the cork flying. One of my favorite movies, one that Mike hates, but allows me my 24 hours once a year, is A Christmas Story. You know, that classic line throughout the entire movie, you'll shoot your eye out, kid! Well, with all that pressure, you can definitely shoot an eye out or two with a cork. So what's the solution so that you don't shoot your friend's eye out or maybe bust a window or two? 
all you have to do is make sure that your sparkling wine is cold. The gas is inversely related to the temperature. So what that means is the warmer the liquid that the, has the carbon dioxide, the larger the gas release. So the cork will fly further. As the temperature cools, the carbon dioxide becomes more soluble in the liquid, so less escapes when the cork is opened, causing less of a dramatic pop. So that also plays into when you want to saber, because you have got to saber a bottle of sparkling. Oh my God, it's so addicting. When you go to saber, you have to make sure that that bottle is super, super cold. Then all you have to do is find the seam and swipe along it. Holding the bottle at a 45 degree angle helps so that the bubbles don't force all of your liquid out and you don't lose all of your champagne on the ground. But key, super, super cold. So whenever you see a video of a champagne saber fail, the bottle was not cold enough. So what's the big question? between the difference of sparkling wine and champagne? Well, technically, it really could be nothing other than where it's located or technically where it was made. It is really more of a classification than anything else. Most importantly, it's not champagne unless it comes from the Champagne region in France. Be sure not to call sparkling wine from any other region of the world champagne it is illegal to do so. You need to call it sparkling wine. Additionally, if it comes from Champagne, if it is not made in the Method Champignon way, they will toss you in the Marne River like you did during the riots of the 1910 and 11. It has to be made in a specific way. The next important concept is that in order to be classified as Champagne, the alcoholic beverage can only be made from three grape varietals, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, or Pinot Meunier. So if you are toasting to a varietal other than these three, be sure to call it a sparkling wine. With that aside, the basic process of making champagne or sparkling wine is the same. We all know wine goes through fermentation. That's how we get the alcohol. The chemical breakdown in which sugars are converted into ethyl alcohol is fermentation. Carbon dioxide is released as a byproduct during this process. So why doesn't all wine have effervescence like sparkling or champagne? Because champagne and sparkling wine goes through a second fermentation. The wine goes through the first form fermentation until dry, like all other wines. But then more sugar is added for a second fermentation inside a closed container. So what's the difference? Well, did you notice that I said closed container and not in bottle? In addition to where the wine is made, that little tidbit in the winemaking process is a big, big deal. Not all sparkling wine goes through a second fermentation in bottle. There are three methods of second fermentation. Which, which method is used determines the quality of the wine and the size of the bubbles that we love so much. The most labor-intensive method is Method Champignois, or the traditional method. All Champagne uses this process. By classification, it must. It involves taking the Cuvée, which is the base wine, and Tirage, which is the sugar, wine, and yeast, and putting it into the bottle. In this method, the bottle itself is the fermenting vessel. The second fermentation takes between one and three months. Labeling will either read method champenois if champagne or fermented in this bottle if it is not from the champagne region. The second type of fermentation is transfer process. This is a much cheaper process because there is no riddling. Emptying bottles into a transfer tank under pressure eliminates the carbon dioxide loss during filter and dosage. Fermented in a bottle or bottle fermented is found on these labels. So that's a little tricky and a little sly if you ask me. Chamat process 
also known as Methodo Italiano, or bulk process, is the least expensive way to make sparkling wine. This is how Prosecco is typically made. In this method, the second fermentation is done in a tank. It is very rapid and extremely uniform, and the CO2 is actually injected into the cuvee. There typically is no aging on lees in this process, therefore you're not going to get a yeasty flavor that is so expected in a bottle of champagne. You also are going to get much larger bubbles. So bubbles come in a variety of sweetness levels, and depending on your palate, you will like some more than others. There are actually six levels of sweetness. Extra brew is less than six grams of residual sugar per liter. Brute is less than 12 grams. Extra dry is between 12 and 17. Sec is between 17 and 32 grams. Demi-sec is between 32 and 50. And dua is 50 grams. That is major sweetness for me. Okay? I cannot deal with that. Now, the thing that I find very tricky before I knew these levels is I always would want to go to the extra dry because to me, extra dry means little sugar, the driest it's going to get, and I would be disappointed because it would have 12 to 17 grams of sugar in it. It's actually the extra brute that I love the most. However, brute is much more commonly seen in the stores. What about the glass controversy? Oh my God, should you be sipping your bubbles in a wine glass, a tulip-shaped wine glass, a coupe, a flute? Now, a coupe, you know, that's the old way. That's the, you know, New Year's Eve, here we go, okay? The, you know, it's traditional. It's classy. But then we moved on to the flute because that is extraordinaire. That is the true definition of class. Well, in my honest opinion, it all comes down to personal preference. But, and it's a big but, there is definitely a difference to the taste depending on what glass you use. Depending on the glass, it will continue, the bubbles will continue to rise at a different pace and a different length of time. So in reality, when it comes to champagne or sparkling, the glass does matter. To make a very long and scientific story short, tall, narrow glasses will keep your bubbles lasting longer than wide-mouthed ones. Carbon dioxide irritates the sensory nerves in the nose. This leads to the popular tingling sensation of sparkling wines. Research shows that the level of the gas close to the edge of the flute were, were two to three times higher than those reached above at the coupe. So yes, the glass does matter to you. Do you like the tingle? Then go with a flute. Not a fan of the tingle? Go with a coupe. As I wrap this podcast up, I thought it would be interesting to share some champagne trivia with you. Who knows? Maybe you can use it as a conversation starter at your next party. According to the biographer of Marilyn Monroe, she used to bathe in bubbles. It supposedly took 350 bottles of champagne to fill her tub. Champagne is the only beverage served during Wimbledon, and you can't get more snooty than Wimbledon. 28 thousand bottles of champagne are served each year. If you're lucky enough to own your own ship or airplane, you would definitely christen it with a bottle of champagne. What does every season ending championship cart into the winner's locker room? Yep, a cart full of champagne. Although I must admit, this one kind of bothers me a bit. Along with the race car championships, Come on, drink the champagne. Don't waste it by shaking it and squirting it all over your teammates. God, what a waste. And lastly, James Bond may have liked his martinis shaken, not stirred, but he must love champagne more since he drinks it more than any other beverage in his movies. According to James Bond statistics, in 22 Bond films, there are 35 occasions on which the character was portrayed drinking champagne of which 17 were Bollinger R.D. and 7 were Dom Perignon.
So there you have it, my little bit of bubbles. So go out there, pick up a bottle, get it nice and cold, and saber. And be sure to video yourself sabering and reach out to me on social media at Dracina Wines and let me know how it goes. Slancha. Thanks for listening to Dracina Wines Podcast. If you have suggestions of what topics you would like us to discuss, please reach out to us on social media or at dracinawines at gmail.com. If you liked our podcast, please subscribe at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or whichever podcasting program you use. To easily subscribe at iTunes, please go to bit.ly forward slash Dracina Podcast. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash capital D for Dracina and capital P for podcast. We would greatly appreciate you leaving a review on your favorite system. It helps others to find us. Let's get social. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Pinterest, YouTube, Google Plus, and Periscope at, at Dracina Wines. And I am on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud. Check out our award-winning wine at dracinawines.com. And remember to always pursue your passion. Slancha!